Hi, I'm Seth Kay. I've been a wedding photographer for almost 20 years and prior to that worked as a photojournalist for 15. I've seen a lot of things in my day and have embarrassed myself more than once. A few examples come to mind and the time has come to share. That's right, kids. It's story time. One very hot summer day, I was photographing a wedding where the ceremony was in an unair conditioned church and the humidity was as high as it could have been without it actually raining. The priest didn't have any restrictions for us other than not stepping up onto the altar, and it was spacious, so we had a fair amount of room to move around. When the weather is this way and you're working hard, and as other wedding photographers can surely attest, you start sweating through your clothes. Sometimes a combination of how well things fit, how much they're sticking to you as you move around, and how we move and contort ourselves to get into position for a shot can suddenly become more than the sum of its parts. I found myself squaring up to take a photo of the couple from the side as they were facing the priest. This meant I had to move a little further up so I could see their faces. So I found myself about five feet in front of the front pew where the bridesmaids were all sitting. So I crouched down so I wasn't in anyone's way and I wouldn't be obvious being at the front of the church in front of everyone. And as I did so, my pants, in the humidity and heat, clung to my thighs and I split my pants from the inseam to the knee. Did I mention I was right in front of the bridesmaids? Yep, and in that moment, they all heard the rip and all saw it happen. I quickly brought my knees together, but the damage had been done, and that was, I'm embarrassed to say, something they couldn't unsee. I made my way to the back of the church and texted my wife that I needed a spare set of pants, and could she please bring them to me at the venue, which was thankfully only 10 minutes from where we were living. I managed to finish out the ceremony without any further damage to my pants or my dignity, though the bridesmaids did playfully mock me the rest of the day. Thankfully, my second shooter was very prepared and happened to have safety pins with her. I secured myself as best I could during the ride to the venue where I had a spare set of pants waiting for me. For years afterward, I brought a spare change of clothes along just in case, which I thankfully never had to pull out and use. This story happened just a couple of weeks ago. It was at a backyard wedding and there was a tent set up under which, when I arrived, I set up my lighting in preparation for later. When I got everything squared away, I went into the house to greet the bride. It was a more modern home, and there were steps up and steps down into different rooms, so I had to watch my step. There were a couple of dogs walking around, and it's my habit to make friends with them pretty much right away. After telling them they were good boys and good girls, I was pointed in the direction of where the bride was getting ready, so I knocked on the door and waited for them to let me in. When the door opened, I walked in to greet the smiling bride, whom I had never met in person, and promptly tripped on another small dog that was sitting on the floor just inside the door. To say I was mortified is an understatement. This was the first time I had met anyone in the room, and I put my hands to my mouth in both an effort to hide not only my shame, but also from the stares of the bridesmaids, whom I can only imagine were thinking, WTF, dude? I apologized profusely, and I don't know if it's because the bride was nervous or preoccupied with wedding day preparations, but she assured me it was okay and that no harm was done. I crouched down to let the dog sniff my hand and petted its head to make amends. It looked at me skeptically, understandably so, and thankfully had a forgive-and-forget personality. I spent the rest of prep looking down every time I moved to make sure no one was underfoot. In my pre-wedding days, one of my clients was a radio station in Hartford, Connecticut, and they used to host concerts at different venues in the area. My duties were to photograph the bands performing, photograph them with the DJs and radio station managers backstage, and do the whole VIP thing so the station would have photos for marketing and promotion. Uh, this was back in the film days, so I had to keep track of how much I had in the camera at any given time so I wouldn't run out and have to change roles at an inopportune moment. One year, the guest of honor was Max Weinberg, who was the drummer for Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band and, at the time, Conan O'Brien's band leader. The station manager reiterated that a photo of him was at the top of my priorities. So when the opportunity arose, I introduced myself to him as the station's photographer and asked for 60 seconds of his time. The radio station had set up a makeshift portrait area where the bands and DJs could have their picture taken in a more controlled environment. He was gracious and stepped into the area, and I fired off a bunch of frames. In the pre-digital days, you never knew what you were going to get, so in a time crunch, you just kind of fired away to mitigate the number of blinks and framing issues, which is what I did. I thanked Mr. Weinberg for his time, and as he was walking away, I thought to myself, you know, I got an awful lot of frames out of that role. In my enthusiasm to get these photos, and in my nervousness at being newer to the field at the time, in the moment I forgot to put film in the camera. I'm cringing just thinking about this because not only is that the most amateur thing in the world, but here's Bruce Springsteen's drummer that I need to chase after and tell him I had a technical issue, and could he please come back for 20 more seconds? He didn't seem thrilled, but he was cool about it and said okay, so I had him for those 20 seconds and I got what I needed. 
obviously I didn't tell anybody about this at the time. And I don't know that I've told this story to anyone since then because, well, it is not a good reflection on me. But this was probably 20 or 25 years ago now, so I feel it's okay to come clean. It's still embarrassing, but it is one of those lessons you learn and never repeat. Many processes and techniques are born from experience. It took me a few years to learn how to do family portraits efficiently, and with a minimum of embarrassment to myself and others. One of these learning moments was when I was posing the family of one particular bride and put both of her parents next to her. When you're lining people up, you try to squeeze them in so there aren't obvious gaps in between. I asked her parents to move closer to one another, and as I'm doing so, I had a bridesmaid whisper in my ear that they had just gotten divorced. She and I made eye contact for a moment as I realized my mistake and then had the bride's dad move to the opposite side so he and his new ex weren't right next to one another. I could see everyone visibly relax once they were separated. Since then, when I'm having my final meeting with a couple and going over who will be in these groups, I always ask if their parents are together. If not, I'll make a note of it, and this will let me know how to pose them when the time comes. During one wedding early in my career, I was working my way through my list of family portraits during cocktail hour and getting them done at a pretty good rate. I was about a quarter of the way in when I realized that somehow I had knocked the switch on my lens from autofocus to manual focus. When I realized, I just looked down at my camera for a moment and thought the best way to recover would be to tell the people I was already done with, my bad everyone, I had an issue and if you could please indulge me, I'm going to need to redo some of the groups. Thankfully, it wasn't an extensive list of family, and I was able to redo everyone and continue on and finish the list with everyone in focus, and on time. Since then, I now put gaffer's tape over that switch on all of my lenses so I can't accidentally turn the autofocus off. Finally, here's one where I literally live to tell the tale. This was another very hot summer, and the couple had their ceremony and reception at a ski resort. The resort apparently rented themselves out for events during the off-season. This was July, and because they were primarily a winter venue, the lodge didn't have air conditioning. The bride was getting ready in a really attractive A-frame ski lodge halfway up a mountain, and everyone was sweating in there. Then it was time for the ceremony, and I scooted out before the bride so I could be at the ceremony site and be ready for the processional. The ceremony was held in an open field that was just beautiful. It was also full sun in the middle of the afternoon, and I'm wearing the typical all-black photographer's outfit. So the ceremony goes off without a hitch, and everyone is joyful and happy and hot. Next on the itinerary was a big group photo, and the only way to get everyone in was to shoot it from above. Adjacent to the ceremony site was a silo with a circular staircase that went up several stories inside it. While guests gathered below, I walked up three stories inside this enclosed blast furnace and found an open window to shoot down out of and get that big group photo. These kinds of shots are pretty quick, so before making my way back down the stairs, I sat down on a sofa to catch my breath. I realized this was a bad move because it was just hot, stale air in there with no movement. So I made my way back downstairs and started setting up for the family portraits. I got my lighting set up and started going through the list, and after about 10 minutes, the bride asked if I was feeling okay because apparently I had turned white and seemed a little unsteady on my feet. Uh, trying to be stoic and power my way through it, I said, nah, I'll be fine. This lasted all of two more minutes until I put a finger in the air and said, you know, I think I need to sit down. So I sat down right there on the grass, and to my great fortune, the bride, her mother, and the majority of the bridesmaids were all nurses. One brought me orange juice from the bar, and another brought me potato chips for the salt, and another a compress to put on the back of my neck. They really took care of me, and I'm grateful for their expertise. Thankfully, this was a wedding where they made their own timeline, so there was no rush to follow a specific itinerary like there would have been at a traditional wedding venue. So after about 10 minutes, my private healthcare team declared me fit for duty, and I was able to finish out the portraits. After I hydrated and got some salt in me and cooled my core down, I was fine for the rest of the night. One of the non-nurse bridesmaids coincidentally happened to be a server at a local restaurant. One day I went in and she recognized me and told me the couple likes to tell the story about how they almost killed their photographer. Who am I to deny someone a good story? Stuff happens, and when it does, hopefully there isn't anything you can't recover from. In the best cases, these are learning moments and teachable moments. So all over the years, like all of us, I've done or said things here and there that are just embarrassing with no lesson. If there's a takeaway from any story that can help me moving forward, I'll take all the help I can get. I've been doing this for some time, and learning better ways to do things never ends. Hopefully no damage is done in the process, and at the end of the day, everyone walks away the better for it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your taking the time to listen. If you like what you heard, feel free to leave a like, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. What are your embarrassing moments from weddings or other jobs? What have you learned from your own mistakes? Feel free to sound off in the comments. 
If you'd like to see more videos like this and hear more stories, check out this other one I made for you. This is Ask a Wedding Photographer. I'm Seth Kay, and I'm here to help.